Dusty Baker here with um, lots of requests and lots of support um, from lots of friends and family members and some followers um, on Facebook and Instagram and with the support of my brother-in-law uh, Daniel Arms giving me a shout out. We're gonna try to do this bison YouTube thing. Um, we've we've been looking at a lot of bison stuff online and there's just not very much out there and I think that these animals are, are by far the coolest animals in, in North America. Uh, it is the national mammal and I think it's important for us to know more about them. and teacher for um, nine years now and the past couple of years I've been teaching Oklahoma history to uh, freshmen and um, it's it's a class that I really enjoy teaching and one of the things about that class and part of the curriculum um, with Oklahoma being with a um, large Native American culture and a lot of Native American history um, we get to talk about the bison a lot and so being able to teach that and teach that to the kids um, has also kind of inspired me to make this real and be able to have these unique animals in in my life not just talk about them to my students in a book um, just being able to come out here and tell my story and um, being able to come out here and raise these animals um, that are so amazing and so uh, that was another thing that kind of inspired me to do this. And now when I'm reading or going over or lecturing something in Oklahoma history and we talking about Native Americans and how essential the bison is to the Native Americans. And um, when I'm able to do that and then I get to tell them, I say my bison and they're like, what? They, they don't understand. And so, uh, you know, in every semester I get new kids because Oklahoma history is only uh, one semester and so every time I get new kids and I'm talking to them about bison and then I tell them about my bison they're really lost and confused and they don't believe me so I have to pull out my phone and pull up, pic pull up pictures of the bison so that they can um, believe me that I'm not a liar and I do own bison now so that is that's pretty cool um, and it's neat talking to them about it because they're interested as well and I teach a lot of city kids and they don't understand uh, about ranching and farming sometimes and um, especially about bison. And so I try to connect what uh, I know and my experiences um, with what I teach as well. So we have 40 acres here and it's, uh, this area is known as the Cross Timbers region, hence uh, the name of our bison company. And what that means, it's basically the gateway from the forest to the prairie. And we're in the portion of Oklahoma where uh, the woods or the forest um, meets the prairie. And so um, we're part of the Great Plains right here and we're right at the edge of the timbers of eastern Oklahoma. And so we have a lot of open grassland here and we do have some hardwood trees, some oak trees and hickory trees and things like that. I just really appreciate the, these animals and I want to learn lots more about them um, as well as lots of people. Uh, we need to appreciate this mammal. Uh, it's kind of an up and rising uh, animal in the, in the United States right now. 
And so um, I'm going to try to help as much as I can. Uh, I want to talk about these animals a lot more and just put you on a journey with us as uh, we try to raise some bison. What do you want? Yeah, we know what you want. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Um, today, I want to introduce you to my herd. Uh, it's a very small herd, just got six. We've got five heifers and one bull. Two of our heifers are bred, they're three years old, and the other um, three are yearlings. So um, they're not able to be pregnant yet, but um, what we wanna do today is I want to introduce you to every single one of them. Uh, yes, I've been asked this question several times. Um, I do have names for every one of them. When you have six of them, uh, you can give each one of them names. Plus, they're my first herd and, and it's easy and fun to identify them and because and, every single one of these animals have different characteristics. And so uh, let's get to know them. So right here we have the bull. He is not the biggest animal out here, but he is, uh, he is our bull. And he's, he's the guy that we're counting on uh, to get the job done. His name is John Dunbar. I gave him the name from one of my first inspirations of the movie Dances with Wolves. Uh, that was kind of the one movie that, I, it was a go-to movie in my childhood and it's something I'm one I always love to watch and uh, Kevin Costner as you know was the leading role in that movie and uh, as a lieutenant I believe he uh, his name was John John Dunbar and so that's kind of the the name that we gave him um, we're really relying on him to hopefully do his job this summer and get some of these um, heifers bred. He's still in the middle of molting. He hadn't quite got everything off yet, but as you can tell. Okay, so what you see here is our quapaw heifers. Right here and here. They are our three year old bred heifers. 6,008 here, who's standing in front of me. Her name is Quapaw, and we gave her that name just because of the tribe she's from. Um, the one back here, rolling around in the dirt a little bit, tag number 6005. That is Dakota, and the reason we gave her that name is because uh, her bloodline uh, comes from Theodore Roosevelt National Park in the Dakotas. These two heifers, when they first came in, um, wouldn't even come close to us. Um, they were out on about four or five hundred acres or so and um, Since they've came here, we spent some time with them um, Pretty hands-on getting in the pens with them obviously feeding them just about every day and With that, you know, uh, they become more patient with us. They kind of uh, Calm down a whole lot. So for them to to be this close to us is, is quite a big deal. This is Bellstar, the feistiest heifer of the group. 
uh, uh, she definitely has the most attitude of the group and she can turn on her uh, wittiness whenever she wants and she does it quite often. Uh, Belle Star gets her name from the famous bandit queen, the outlaw of um, Oklahoma during the 1930s and 40s. Uh, she was known as the bandit queen because she was a horse thief who used to run with uh, some famous outlaws such as Jesse James. She definitely uh, can be um, dangerous at times. Um, nothing too crazy uh, yet, but when you get her in a pen um, and corral her up, corner, she does not like that, just like most of them don't, but um, she is a good looking heifer. She's two years old and um, hopefully by this time next year, she'll be having a baby. Here we have coming up is Peaches. Peaches is our youngest heifer of the group. Uh, she's kind of the baby of the group. Peaches gets the name um, after the place where we got them from, located in Stratford, Oklahoma, about 30 minutes north of Sulphur. Uh, Stratford is famous for their peaches and their peach festival they have every year. So um, that's where we gave her that name. Here's one of our favorites. This is Eleanor. We gave Eleanor a name because she is the classy heifer of the group. She is the sweetest. Um, she was the very first one I ever touched in, in my first herd when we purchased them. Um, she is definitely the most gentle. She does love her some cattle cubes. Right now she's more interested in the grass. She's still molting. Hadn't quite got all of her uh, winter coat off, but she is a very, very sweet girl. Um, I say that at any moment she could be <laughs> a bison again, but um, she's, she's pretty sweet most of the time. So um, she's just, she's uh, really long. Um, heifer, which is a good trait to have, um, especially when it comes to breeding and um, hopefully uh, some of her offspring will have that longevity that she has from here to here um, because uh, that's where the stakes come from. And so that's pretty important when it comes to meat production. So her tag number um, is in the left side of her ear. It means she is a heifer. Uh, we're lucky to have Eleanor. She's the sweetest um, heifer of the group. We can't do this with all of our bison. Um, it's not always really safe to do this. If my wife saw me down here doing this right now, she'd be probably questioning me or yelling at me, telling me to get out of the pen. So uh, this is this is one of the funnest parts of this, and so. This is, um, this is one of those moments you get to enjoy um, with such a majestic beast like Eleanor herself. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video of getting to know the Cross Timbers Bison Herd. Uh, they're full of character and all kinds of personality. So stay in touch with us. Um, hopefully in one of my upcoming videos, hopefully we have uh, some baby bison on the ground. Thank you guys. Really? Oh, quit it. Stubborn. She's a knucklehead. This is Bell Star. That's the way she acts. She's always got a little crampy attitude. Is that necessary? I don't think so. Oh, cut it out.
Cut it out. There's no sense for that. Silly. Beautiful time to be in Oklahoma. It's May, it's warm, we got lots of green grass and lots of happy bison. However, I want to talk to you today about supplement feeding and why we supplement feed. And we're going to show you the process of how we do that on a daily basis. All right, so one of the reasons why we feed um, is you really have to break it down into seasons. Um, right now, summertime, so we obviously have uh, a lot of green grass. And of course, we want the bison to be grass fed. And so um, we're not on a thousand acre ranch um, where we have a lot of open country where the bison can roam for miles um, with unlimited grass supply. Um, we're on 20 acres here and so uh, we do some uh, pasture rotations uh, for grazing purposes, but we also supplement feed. These animals are only getting about five pounds every other day, uh, and that's per head. So five pounds every other day, and uh, they're getting a lot of grass in right now, which is what we want. We want to maintain weight, um, especially with our bred heifers. We don't want them weights to go up or down we want it to stay constant right now because they're about to have babies. Right, so one of the reasons that we put the troughs here so close to the fence is for easy access just to pour it in so that if uh, if somebody else is feeding um, like my stepdad helps feed and take care of them for me when I'm gone um, it's just easy access easy to pour over without getting into the pens with them. So what are we feeding our bison? What we have here is called the standard four-way blend and it basically consists of several different types of feed. It's just a custom blended byproduct feed that we buy here locally. Me and a couple of other bison producers uh, feed this and it has absolutely done some great things for our bison. The standard four-way blend combination consists of some soybean whole pellets, some corn gluten pellets, wheat mid pellets, and rolled corn. This combination is going to really help our young bison herd as they continue to grow and reproduce in the future. enjoyed learning how we feed our bison every day. Um, 
this is how we do it here in southern Oklahoma. Remember, it's all about where you live and the seasons um, that you're dealing with. So um, I hope you enjoyed our video. Stay in touch with us and go follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you guys. See you next time. Hey guys, Dusty Baker here with Cross Timbers Bison. Um, so you're probably wondering what is all this back here? Well, this used to be a dairy barn. Um, if I already haven't told you before, where we have our bison is on an old uh, dairy farm. And that's you can see the silos in the back and things like that, the old barn facilities. And we've spent a lot of time since we've got the bison, and even before we had the bison, cleaning this place up and trying to use uh, what good is left of the old dairy farm and use it for our bison um, so what we did here is we knocked down the whole um, dairy barn and it was the cinder blocks uh, walls um, they were really easy to push over I got some good footage for you that I'm going to show you here in just a second but the important part is what's left is this concrete floor and most uh, people know that you've got to have really good facilities for bison and our facilities are okay but we want to have really good handling systems and we want to have a we're going to eventually have a shoot system basically right here um, because you've got to have really good facilities we bark we work our bison twice a year and uh, once in the spring and once in the fall and right now it's just summertime but um, coming coming around in the fall um, it'll be time to work them again so we've got to have a shoot system set up we've got to have a working handling system set up uh, for our bison and um, it takes a lot uh, it can't just be you know throw some cattle panels together and and um, you know hopefully everything goes okay you've really got to have some tough pipe uh, handling systems and so that's what we're gonna do here on this platform it's real exciting um, to get all this cleaned up we're gonna have all this cleaned up eventually we got some people interested in coming to get this uh, these cinder blocks some of them are in still in really good shape and so what we're gonna do is get this cleaned up and we're gonna use this big concrete pad here uh, to work our bison on uh, it's just easier and cleaner to keep them out of the mud when you do work them in it and it's um, a little you know better for your facilities and easier to keep your um, shoots systems and things like that in clean um, and in good shape so um, watch this footage here and I'll show you kind of how the day went and um, we'll talk about what we're gonna do to this place
Well, I hope you enjoyed that footage and seeing these walls go down. Um, you could tell that they were just really easy to push over with that um, backhoe, um, that Kubota backhoe. Uh, thanks to Daniel again and his connection with Great Plains Kubota for helping us out. That thing did an awesome job. Um, it did everything that we needed it to do and some other stuff uh, around the property. So I know you didn't get to see the Bassett a bunch today, but what um, we will have hopefully um, by this fall, um, as we get all this cleaned up and hauled off, and we'll have a working handling system for our bison, which is really exciting. Something that you have to have when raising bison. And so, pretty excited about that, and um, thank you for following along. And we'll get this cleaned up in the future, and we'll keep you updated. And maybe next time you see it, we'll, be, we'll have a shoot system. Thank you, guys. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Dusty Baker here with Cross Timbers Bison. Um, if you saw one of my previous videos, uh, you probably watched us tear down an old dairy barn. Here's what's left. We got lots of cinder blocks here. Um, I know it doesn't look very nice right now, but what's important is this concrete foundation. Um, I think this concrete foundation is probably about 30 or 40 years old, and it's still in really good shape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this for our bison handling systems. And I got a lot of questions on, on basically what is working bison. So what do I mean when I'm talking about working bison? So basically what it is, is we work our bison two times a year, once in the fall and once in the spring. That's how we do it here in Southern Oklahoma. Some producers don't do it that way. That's just how we do it here uh, because of the conditions that we're at, the climate, and things like that really kind of go into effect. Uh, so we do have to have some human intervention here with these bison. I know some people think, oh, you just let them go, let them roam and do their thing. Well, uh, if you really want to have good quality bison and a good foundation herd and produce good animals, we have to have some human intervention. We have to bring them in and we have to give them vaccinations. We have to warm them and keep them as healthy as we can. Uh, and some of those vaccinations are going to prevent uh, parasites and things like that uh, because here in southern Oklahoma we do have a lot we have parasites that's just natural that's the way mother nature is and we try to prevent parasites from spreading and destroying a, a bison herd because it can, because it can very quickly if you don't take care of it and uh, we also worm our animals just like a lot of producers just like cattle do um, and so uh, and that is another thing is we don't give our bison any additives any hormone enhancers or anything like that like some cattle producers do uh, that is highly illegal uh, as part of the National Bison Association we do not do anything like that we keep our bison the way they are and the way God made them they're tough animals um, and they're they're survivors and we just have to try to keep them as healthy as we can so um, many of you know that you have to have a really good handling system when I'm talking about a handling system I'm talking about good corrals a good shoot system um, tough tough um, equipment to keep your bison safe as you are working them through a process and it is a process we we will uh, process each bison one at a time give them their vaccinations warm them check them over make sure they're doing okay uh, you can even do preg checks and things like that um, you can pull hair for registration uh, to register them register them with the national bison uh, registry um, there's several things you can do that uh, when you bring them in but we just warm ours and we vaccinate them we can clean off their ear tags um, if we need to put new ear tags in 
And so there's a lot of things that we can do with that, but we have to do it twice a year. And so we have to have a good bison system or handling system. Uh, what we plan on doing here is you can see some of the excess, what's left of the dairy barn, which we already use this corral. It's piped up. It's in pretty good condition. Not great, but it's good. And we're going to beef this up and we're going to make it tougher. We're going to make it a little higher and we're going to turn this into a bison handling system where they basically will run through here and they'll come down an alley uh, with some uh, pipe we'll have built here and a chute system. Speaking of a chute system, uh, we've got to find one. We're kind of shopping around for a chute system. Uh, there's been some people tell me to look at certain brands. Uh, this is where it gets really expensive. Um, you've got to have these good working facilities uh, to safely take care of your bison. And uh, this stuff is not cheap, um, especially when it comes to securing bison and having tough equipment. Uh, because these, sometimes we're dealing with, you know, 1,300 pound uh, cows, um, 2,000 pound bulls. You've got to have tough equipment for these animals. Uh, and so it is expensive. We have to find a good chute system. We're shopping around for one right now. And so uh, if any of you have any suggestions on uh, good bison handling systems or chutes or things like that, let me know. I need to know. So, uh, but we've got a lot of work here. Um, we've got some cleaning up to do. We've got a guy that's supposed to come get these. And um, then we're going to build a chute system like I talked about in my previous um, video. So I hope that you understand a little bit more about what does it mean to work the bison. Uh, what is a bison handling system? Hey guys, so this is our um, main corral system right here. Um, it's piped up pretty well. Um, we're gonna do some construction on this at some point and try to make this a little bit better. But this is basically where we feed from. Uh, have you seen my, some of my feeding videos of how we feed them and things like that? But this is the main feeding lot. It's pretty muddy right now. We've had a lot of rain here lately, but uh, this is also our main working uh, corral so whenever we want to work our bars our bison like i've talked about we're going to bring them in here first we're going to try to reduce as much stress on them as possible um, if you don't already know these bison when you start to work them and start moving them around from pin to pin uh, they get pretty sketchy that blood starts rushing in and you see how calm mine are when i'm out in the pasture with them that changes really quick when you get them in a pin and start to corner them um, it changes really quick. You start to see the uh, wild come out in them. And so um, part of the reason why we do feed them, um, and I do get out there with them, it's probably not always the safest, so don't take um, you know notes on that. So, um, But uh, me being out there with them and around them and feeding them every day, uh, that helps us in the future, especially when we work them. We want them to be as calm as possible because they do get stressed out. And um, we kind of were forced into this to try to make a move really quick. That's why we tore the uh, old dairy barn down is because um, we had seven bison. And uh, I know Daniel may have mentioned it in one of his live videos once. But so we were taking our bison. We were loading up in a trailer and we were taking them to... The vet, the guy, same guy I bought mine from, Doc Gerald Parsons up in Stratford. And we would load them up in the trailer. We would drive them about 25 or 30 minutes north of Sulphur uh, to the vet. And he has a really nice system. He's been doing it for 30 years or so, maybe more. 
uh, and he knows what the heck he's doing. He is a bison guru. Anyways, we take our bison up there and he runs them through his really nice shoot system. He has a hydraulic shoot system and he does a great job. And we were taken up there, uh, we, we work them, we get them vaccinated and things like that. So we had done that last fall and then this spring we did it. And it, it creates some stress, especially when you put them in a trailer really close to each other. So uh, we loaded them up, we took them to Stratford and everything was great, everything was fine. We worked them, uh, got them all vaccinated and then we brought them back and we pulled up here and we went to unload them and um, I kind of look in the trailer to, to scare them out, to get them out of the trailer. And I look in and one of our youngest heifers is laying there and she's not moving. And so I get the rest of the bison out and they jump over and, and they run out and we close the gate and get them taken care of. And I go inside the trailer and I start to immediately poke her and try to see if she'll uh, wake up. Uh, she's obviously dead at this point and so i immediately call my vet uh, i called um doc parsons and i'm like hey doc we this youngest heifer is just dead she's in the trailer we just got back and she's dead and he said well um do you see any puncture holes or anything like that and uh, she was laying on her right side and we looked over her left side didn't see any blood whatsoever nothing um and so i flipped her over and um I got to looking at her and she had a a puncture wound like right behind her um uh, what would that be left shoulder i guess i should say right shoulder whatever anyway she had it punctured right behind her shoulder uh, there was no sign of blood or anything like that just happened to pull her thick hide back her hair and i looked and there was a hole um and so obviously um she was horned by one of our um, other bison um, that's just um, part of being um, a bison owner and um, uh, that's just part of the livestock business uh, you ask any um, cattle producer or any bison producer stuff happens and unfortunately it was our youngest heifer her name was Lucy um, and so that was kind of the first blow for us and what it did was it woke us up and we were like okay uh, there's a learning moment right here that we need to uh, soak in so that really got us going on getting our own shoot system getting our own handling system so that we can reduce as much stress as possible we don't have to take them to a vet and we can um, handle them right here at their own farm and that alone the fact that we don't have to take them somewhere reduces a lot of stress on our bison and um I'm not saying they're not going to get stressed, but they're going to here, but it's going to reduce it a whole bunch. And um, so it's uh, sad. It really um, was devastating to us to lose a, a young, uh, pretty heifer. She looks just like peaches. Her and peaches are about the same size. And so every time I look at peaches, I think of Lucy. Um, but uh, anyways, so that uh, forced us a hand. And so we are gonna get our own handling system and so that's why it's really important there's the backstory to it and um, I know it's super sad but that's just um, that's the way it goes sometimes and, and we, we we can do our best to prevent it um, but stuff can still happen they're bison at the end of the day they're still kind of wild and when you work them that blood starts to run and anything can happen and so what we want to do is try to reduce that as much as possible so um, I hope that uh, you know we uh we have learned a bunch and um i hope i'm i'm helping you out that's just what our case is uh i've talked to several producers and they all have similar stories you know even on the big huge ranches they still have incidents like that um and that's just what happened in our first year unfortunately so we'll take it and we move on we learn from it and we're going to keep growing and we're going to make us a really good handling system and with that we're going to have a good shoot system as well to process and run through uh, our bison through there and so we can vaccinate them and things like that so thank you guys uh, i hope that you uh, understand why it is important to have a good handling system and why we have to 
uh, vaccinate them and take care of them and things like that. I'll go into more vaccinations and what we do when we actually run them through the system, which is really exciting. We'll have a full video over that. Uh, that won't be until like probably November or so when we actually bring them in. So thank you guys very much. Uh, thank you for all the followers. Go subscribe if you already haven't at um, uh, our channel on YouTube at Cross Timbers Bison. You can look us up on Facebook and Instagram. Hope you guys have a great week. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Go Bison. Hey guys, Dusty Baker here with Cross Timbers Bison. Uh, just hanging out with our bison today. Um, one thing I just wanna say is I am overwhelmed with the support and the love that you guys have um, for following our bison. Um, it's really a huge uh, surprise to me and I just um, am soaking it all in and uh, I just wanna spread, you know, kind of my passion for bison. Um, and these animals that were once um, near extinction to, um, you know, having them right here in, in our own pasture. And so um, that's one thing that makes this easy for me is I do have a passion for bison. And um, I want to tell you about that and kind of how, um, what drove me to have bison. And so it really just started when I was a kid. I grew up in the woods, I grew up outside, and I uh, just had a passion for animals. I love being around animals. Um, you know, just a country boy doing his thing. And I went through high school, I was in FFA, and I raised sheep. That was part of my project for um, FFA and 4-H. I, I did that for, I don't know, eight years or so. And so I was involved with the livestock industry doing that. My, my uh, stepdad raised sheep and uh, so we had we had some sheep we had a project going there and then I too much question oh. so I was in the FFA showing sheep did that for like <clears throat> excuse me seven or eight years and then I uh, you know my my dad and um, his dad had a farm they had a Hereford farm up in uh, Lindsay Oklahoma <laughs> So my families have had a past with um, livestock and raising animals and things like that. And then, so uh, I planned on going to Oklahoma State University. I wanted to get a wildlife ecology degree. And so what I did was, is right before I graduated, my history teacher, it's all about connections right here. So my history teacher, her husband was the chief of resource management at the national park here in sulfur and um i got a summer job a uh, summer internship and i was a biological technician basically a fancy word um to you know do stuff around the park and one of the coolest parts of my job was i got to go out in the bi bison pasture and at the park there's about i don't know 10 or so uh, bison there and they come from the wichita mountains in lawton and um, they have their own herd there in the National Park and people drive by and see them all the time. So I got to go take care of them. And guess who I got to work with my first year? Uh, Daniel Arms from Arms Family Homestead. And so uh, I, I knew Daniel in high school and stuff like that, but then we got to work together at the National Park. So that was a really fun experience. And so we got to really uh, get out in the pasture with them, kind of like I'm doing now. And uh, there was a really cool bull there and he was, probably 20 plus years old and he had this big crooked horn and uh, he was pretty famous. Everybody knew who he was. His name was Crooked Horn, obviously. Um, and so he would eat these cattle cubes um, out of our hand and he was massive. I mean, we're talking a uh, one ton bull here. And so that kind of really got me going. I was like, this is neat. This is fun. Um, I think I could do this. So time went on and I went to Oklahoma State you know, on the fall and the spring, and I got to come home in the summer 
and uh, I lived at home. I stayed with my parents uh, while I was at home and I worked in the National Park. I did that for four summers. And so I got a lot of really good experience working for the National Park Service. And I'm still going to school, <clears throat> doing my thing. And so uh, I graduated from Oklahoma State and I became a teacher and a coach. I switched uh, avenues a little bit and I moved to Texas for five years and I, I was a teacher and a coach. That's kind of where my passion started going and um so which was great and i'm still a coach and a teacher and i absolutely love it uh and then after five years of texas moved to oklahoma and i kind of came back to my roots a little bit and i just felt like i needed something else i needed to get back to what i was uh comfortable with you know back to my i don't know kind of country life i guess you could say and so i met a lovely woman and uh, i moved to oklahoma city and I uh, got a teaching and coaching job and so I started um, thinking about this bison thing and um, you know it was my experience with them that just kept buzzing in the back of my head and every time I drive past that park um, that old bison pasture it just, just kept buzzing ahead I was like I really miss being around those animals and uh, you know, I did some college research papers on them in, in high school, or sorry, in college at Oklahoma State, and um, I learned about their history, and I learned that they these animals really suffered, and we got down to a population of less than a thousand, um, you know, by the 1890s and early 1900s, a very scary time for uh, the American bison, and so what you what we started to see was individuals coming together to really try to conserve these animals and and save them from being destroyed and so uh, I just kind of took that uh, history and I felt like I needed to do something I felt like uh, here's an opportunity to um, take an animal that was once almost extinct to raising them and, and growing their numbers in North America. Will we ever get back to 30 million or 60 million animals like there was once before? Uh, probably not. Uh, but we can dang sure do what we can to um, bring these animals back uh, to, to higher populations in North America. And uh, yeah, I only have six right now because I'm just getting started, but I would love to grow our numbers and I would love to contribute to the uh, bison world essentially and and do what I can as a small producer get back to my passion um, so I was coaching and teaching I you know was living the city life a little bit and uh, loving that and um, I kept talking to my wife about you know how fun it would be to raise bison and she just really encouraged me to do it let's let's do it why not and uh, she really just really got on board with me and she was very supportive and uh, she wanted to learn more about ranching and farming and being with these animals and so I started making phone calls uh, to some bison people and I doing I was doing some research and really looking into it and uh, everybody pointed me back to a guy named Doc Gerald Parsons he's a vet up in Stratford, Oklahoma, probably 30 minutes from where our farm is right here. And so uh, I called him up and I said, hey, I'm interested in raising bison. I'd like to get a small herd of bison. And he said, I've got five right here for you if you want them. And I was just kind of struck by, it. I was like, uh, okay. Uh, our pens weren't ready, our corrals weren't ready. And uh, I was just like kind of in shock. Oh crap, I can own five bison right now if I want to. So um, it got real, real fast. And so I said, okay, well, we'll come look at them. And so me and my wife and uh, my stepdad, Kevin, who helps take care of the bison for me, we drove to Stratford. We looked at him and he said, here they are. And he walked out, you know, with a, with a bucket and, and fed them and he had them trained and got them, had them used to people, and um, there they were. And I was like, oh crap, okay, well, I guess we're gonna do this. And so um, 
we gathered up, uh, you know, got some money together and took care of all that business. And about two months later, uh, we went and got them last March in 2018. And um, man, was it a uh, surprise. I mean, uh, but it was really exciting. I was super nervous. Uh, we all were, but I just, I'm so lucky and so blessed to have such great animals. These animals have been pretty awesome, as you can tell in some of our other videos, but we're gonna do everything that we can to have a healthy herd. And you can see all the changes we're starting to make on this property. And um, we just wanna grow our herd and produce um, good bison, good quality bison, and so that we can um, be good producers and help the bison industry. Come here, Eleanor. Here she comes. Baby. Can you film us? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed um, learning about why I love bison and why I'm passionate about them. Um, these are just the coolest animals and this is easy for me to do. Um, it's easy for me to uh, educate people about it. That's all I wanna do. I wanna tell you how we do things here. Uh, we only have six. We don't have thousands of acres of land and, and hundreds of bison roaming around. We just don't have that capability. Um, and so we do what we can here and I'm, I'm very uh, glad and very lucky and blessed to um, have people follow us along on this and I hope that you continue doing so. We have a lot of stuff to talk about and uh, you know, like I said before, these animals just inspire me to keep doing this. And so um, I just hope you enjoy it and I really appreciate you following us along and go subscribe to our channel if you already haven't. Um, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram and uh, just follow us along as we uh, go through this process of uh, just me letting you know how we do things here in southern Oklahoma. Thank you guys so much. Hey y'all, Dusty Baker here with Cross Timbers Bison. Hanging out with my uh, bison dog, buffalo dog, um, Maya. She thinks she's a, a bison dog, but she's... She's really not. She tries to get in there and work them and stuff, but uh, they don't really like dogs at all. So you're uh, you're not gonna see uh, dogs being used to work bison. She's about one year old and uh, she she likes to hanging out with me. So um, this morning we're gonna go check the bison. What I want to talk to you about today is is how we do check the bison. Uh, today I'm using an ATV here on the farm and. Uh, this is probably the safest and easiest way to check bison. Um, you can also use, so a lot of people use farm trucks. Um, we don't need a farm truck out here really. Our place isn't that big. So we can get around pretty quickly and easily using this little ATV. It's pretty awesome. So um, we're gonna go check the bison and see if we have any babies. Okay, so we check our bison twice a day. Uh, we try to check them twice a day. Um, once in the mornings and once in the evenings. Um, the reason we have to check them so much right now is it's birthing season. You guys know that we have uh, two bred heifers that are due at any moment. And it'll be our first uh, babies um, ever at Cross Timbers Bison. So we're super pumped about that. Um, I hope that we just drive out here in this pasture at some point and we'll see a little, uh, you know, red colored baby bison calf out there. So that's what we're really excited for. But um, we do just have to check the herd. We always, um, if they don't come up to the corral, uh, we've got to go down in the pasture and see them and check on them. And, and all we're doing is just checking the herd as a whole. We're making sure everybody's doing okay and, 
and that they look good and uh, also just checking those uh, bred heifers to see if we have any calves. That's yeah so being able to go down in the pasture is pretty fun. We were able to get down there and you guys know we like to get hands on with our bison. We like to be up close and personal with them and so you know when you're when you're in the ATV and you're down there it's you feel safe you're not always having to turn around and look at your back like you see me do a lot of the times so you have to be safe and, and watch your back but um so it's fun to be in the atv and, and be down there and surrounded by them which is fun and i like taking people with me and uh, they feel safe when they're in here with me but uh what i'm going to show you today is um how we check them in the mornings and how we um check them in the evenings so you'll see some um morning footage and you'll see some evening footage of when that sun's going down and it's really pretty here in in sulfur oklahoma Hey guys, so we're down in the pasture just checking the herd. Um, so here you go. This is it right here. This is the fun part coming out here and hanging out with the bison. Um, you know, we get up close and personal with our bison and uh, this is something we enjoy. And so um, a couple of things that uh, is just great about these ATVs is um, first of all, it's safe. If you want to bring people with you uh, down here, you can do that and, and, and be safe, especially with people that aren't used to being around bison and they want to see them. So uh, it's what this ATV is, is really good for. And uh, it's just easy to check them. It's relatively safe. And uh, we like to see them up close and personal and make sure they're, they're, they're doing great. And, and so, yep. Up close and personal right here. Eleanor here. Eleanor came to say hi. Eleanor won't get out of the way. <laughs> Looky there. <laughs> That's hilarious. Can't believe she let me do that. I wouldn't suggest that really at all. <laughs> I just got really lucky. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, today's video. Just 
simply learning about how we check the bison and, and why we check them, you know, once or twice a day during the calving season. It's really important to keep an eye on them and make sure everything's okay and make sure the mama's okay and the rest of the herd is doing good. So got some really exciting news for you. We uh, have some, some good stuff happening around the Cross Timbers uh, bison farm. So stay tuned. I'm going to try to have some uh, quick video turnarounds for you. Got some really exciting stuff happening. Stay tuned. Thank you guys. Subscribe to us. Um, if you want to follow us along, it's a good time to be a part of Cross Timbers Bison. We may have some babies here uh, like really, really soon. So follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and join us, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Hey guys, Dusty Baker here with Cross Timbers Bison. Who we have here is one of our pregnant um, bred heifers. Um, and uh, the problem is, is her and the one that looks just like her other bred heifer um, is usually together. They're, they're kind of in separate, but it's interesting because she's gone. And you guys know that um, we have two bred heifers uh, about to be mamas. And uh, she's not here right now, so which is really interesting. So I think that we need to go out in the pasture and we need to look and see if we've got a baby calf or not. It's going to be really exciting um, because this will be our very first calf and uh, it's going to be big. So I hope that we can go out here and see what we have. Stay tuned. Follow us around. So what I did was, is I snuck up just to the outside of our barn. And so this is always interesting whenever, every time I come out here, I always try to count them and make sure that they're all together. And first thing I noticed was there's only five out here. And if you look right over there, you can't see it right now, but there is a baby bison calf over there with one of our quapaw heifers and I think he's laying down. I really can't see him, but when I first walked up here, I saw him standing up and um, I'm super excited. So the baby calf is up and you can see him hiding behind his mom. What our bison do here is, is they'll lay up when it gets really hot, it's summertime, so they're they get laid up when it's hot in the middle of the day, one, two, three o'clock. Um, and in the evening time, when the sun starts to set, they'll come out and they'll graze again. Um, then they'll, they can even graze all night too. But um, they always stay together. But um, I've been told through a, from a lot of bison experts and, and, and just even cattle people, it's, it's the same sort of um, relationship. Um, but they'll kind of separate themselves from the herd, is my understanding, to calve. And um, I think she had a, the calf last night. Um, we checked her yesterday evening, um, like around 8 o'clock, and um, she was, everything was fine. Uh, we knew that she was getting really close. Um, both of them are really close. So anyways, um, we checked them, and uh, everything was fine. And we come out here the next day, and we have um, a baby calf. So, um, but you know, she's still separating herself out here from the rest of the herd. And uh, I think it's just it's crazy how everything works out. And um, um, these bison, they just take care of themselves. You're not gonna, you're not gonna do anything with them yourself. It's all gonna be natural. You're not going to get around them or anything like that. Like you can 
um, help cattle sometimes that are having trouble calving. But uh, it's crazy how these animals just everything works out and they they can handle themselves and, and they don't need any help at all. And so if you can tell here, everything works out and uh, I know she'll take care of her calf and do a good job. And, um, we're just really excited and hopefully we can get up a little bit closer. Uh, we're not going to get up too close. It's the first time mama and she, uh, I don't want to mess with her. I don't want to push her buttons. So. There you go, right there. There he is. This is about as close as we can get to him. Uh, Mama is super protective and does not like anything near her babies except one of these bison that are already here. So, um, as you can tell, he's doing great. He is milking. And that's the good stuff right there. That's what he needs, that, um, that good nutrition from Mama. And so, he's doing really good. Um, but here, other heifer, um, Dakota, she hasn't had her baby yet. She's about to plump over. She's, she's, come on. Just have a baby at some point, please. So uh, it's July now, which is really late for the bison to have their babies. Typically, it's anywhere from April till June. Um, our quapaw is her name, which these are two quapaw heifers is what we call them. Um, she had hers uh, June 27th. Um, some of you probably uh, saw the sneak peek that I put out on Facebook and Instagram. And I know um, Daniel from Arms Family Homestead uh, did a little calf uh, dropping for us. So anyways, um, but he's doing great. And uh, this is, we're up here at the corral and they only come up for water and we give them a little bit of feed right now. So just a keep them healthy and keep some weight on, on our mamas and our, and our young herd. But the great thing about that drone is I don't have to get out there with that baby. It's dangerous to get close to these mamas um, when, they've got, when they've got babies. And so you don't want to get really close to them. I can't get near as close as I, I usually do. You've seen some of my videos, but I'm staying out of the pens. Uh, I use that ATV now to really get around and try to Watch my back and be safe. The best way for me to check them right now, and especially the other mama there, Dakota, is to use that drone. So I can get up pretty close and it doesn't bother them. They're, they're kind of used to it by now, really. They'll look up in the sky and see it, but that drone has, has done some cool stuff for us and I love using it. Uh, you see it in every single one of my videos. But 
that drone, I can spy on them and I don't have to go out in the pasture and I can see them and I can really get up close. I can even get some photos of the baby and some really good footage. Hey guys, so I know I've been talking about uh, mamas and babies here a lot lately, but, and that's fun and super exciting, but don't forget about our other three um, heifers. We've got uh, Peaches and then we've got Eleanor, the fan favorite, and then we've got old Attitude. Bell Star, she's out in the pasture somewhere. But um, these guys are doing great. And, um, you know, here pretty soon, uh, hopefully these guys, these gals, excuse me, are, are uh, going to be getting bred. So uh, breeding season for bison is late July, um, August, and September are kind of the main months. And so hopefully our bull, John Dunbar, as you guys have already met, if you haven't, go back to one of my, uh, I think it's second video where I introduced the whole entire herd. And so John, Don, John Dunbar is our main bull. And uh, hopefully he's getting ready to do his job. He's got three heifers uh, t to breed. And so we, uh, we, hope he, we hope he does what he's supposed to do. So, but with bison, you, they have to be um, at least two years old to breed. It takes bison longer to start producing than cattle um, so these heifers are two years old um, so when they have babies next year hopefully uh, they'll be three years old and um, that will be really exciting so we could have potentially three to five babies so kind of the stages it's tough because you know our two oldest heifers um, quapaw and dakota um, still waiting on Dakota to have her baby, but once these uh, mamas have their babies, in a very short period of time is the breeding window, and so uh, those mamas have to have a calf, and then you know uh, the blood starts rushing, and, and and other things are happening inside of mom, and that's the you know when they come in heat, in that July, August, and September. So there's not much turnaround for for those two older ones because. One of them still hadn't calfed, and the other one has calfed uh, in late June. So, um, but these gals here, including Bell Star, uh, should hopefully be coming in heat if they already haven't, and will hopefully be getting pregnant, and John Dunbar does his job here pretty soon. So there's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, we're still waiting on one baby, and we got breeding season right around the corner, uh, which is really exciting. So. Um, everything's going pretty good right here at Cross Timbers. Hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the baby uh, bull. We don't have a name for him yet. Um, we're still thinking about it. So, but thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you for watching our videos and following us along. Um, you know, ever since I started this, um, it's just taken off, and I love it because I get to talk about bison, and I get to talk about my bison. And uh, it's just so fun to talk about these animals. These are just the coolest animals. They're so fun and amazing. I'm so lucky to have um, these six, now seven, um, bison out here on my just little farm in Sulphur, Oklahoma. I just love it, enjoy it, and my family gets to be a part of it. And we just love it. And it's, it's been a great experience. And you guys support supporting me and following me along on this journey has been fun and you're right in the heat of it right here obviously i'm sweating speaking of heat um right here we've got uh, a baby on the ground waiting on one more and we got breeding season coming around the corner so a lot happening and uh just stay tuned keep following us uh subscribe to us if you want to um you know get those notifications and uh go to facebook and you can follow us on instagram so we'd love for you to follow us and and see how we do things here and and how our uh, how the herd's doing and how the babies are doing hopefully babies we still have uh, one more so thank you guys so much
Hey y'all, Dusty Baker here with Cross Timbers Bison. It's an exciting time here. We have one baby on the ground. It's our very first baby. And we like to keep up with that baby and, and check it every day. Uh, we also have one heifer that's due a baby at any time. And so um, every day we need to be able to check these um, heifers and check on their calves and make sure everything's going okay and see if, you know, when we have a new one. And so an easy way to do that is by sending up my drone. Um, what this does is, is, is it keeps us from putting any sort of stress or, or pressure, especially on those mamas right now, as, as they've got, you know, a baby calf or they're about to have a calf, um, there's less stress on them. And uh, most of you probably know, you don't wanna be around a mama with a baby. Um, they can get, you know, really protective, which is great. Now that's what they're supposed to do, but we don't want to get too close to them. We don't want to disturb them at all. And so an easy way to not really place a lot of stress on them is send this little dude up. All right, so what I have here, this is a DJI Mavic Air. It's uh, one of the smaller versions of drones. It's, uh, it's, it's easy to travel with. You can um, collapse it down pretty small. I'll show you that here in a second, um, but I bought this just about one year ago from now. Uh, the first place I took this was Iceland, and uh, that was the first place I even learned how to fly it was in Iceland. So um, I I learned a lot there. It's a beautiful country, um, and uh, I flew this bad boy around. So <clears throat> I use this to go check um, the bison. Um, it's really easy once you learn how to use it. I, I'm no expert at, at flying this drone but uh, there's always something that I learn. Every time I put this thing in the air, um, I'm always learning something new, learning new tricks and stuff. You probably see a lot of my footage that I show in my videos is drone footage because this thing is easy. You don't have to get in the pasture. Um, I can walk out the door, just pull up and I can you know, set it up and we can put it in the air and go check on them just like that. And um, we reduce stress and we don't have to go out in the pasture with them and be real close to them. Even though I like to do that, you see a lot of my videos, I like to get up close to them and get some get some attention. So, um, but let me show you how to set this up and uh, we'll go check the bison. Okay, so I'm gonna set up the remote controller that goes to the drone. You have to use your phone, it just plugs straight into the remote control. And this is how you get to see all the visuals and everything what the drone is seeing in the air. I'm gonna set it up for you. Okay, so I've got my remote hooked up. I've got my drone turned on. Let's go see if we got a baby bison.
All right, so we got the drone back. No new babies yet. Um, we got to check on the herd and make sure everything was going okay. We got to check on our newborn and he's doing great. He's milking on mom a whole bunch, getting all those good nutrients he needs. Okay, so that's just kind of how um, you can see how we set the drone up and that's how we send it up in the air. It's pretty simple once you get used to it. It's a really great system. I know a lot of farmers and ranchers on the big places use those and um, technology is, is going crazy and you can see how well and simple something like a drone is to use to check on your cattle, um, any livestock or your bison. And so we like to use that quite a bit and you'll see it in a lot of my videos I have lots of good drone footage. Uh, you know we like to get out there and get really close to them and you see in my, some of my other videos which we love doing that and they come up to us and whatnot. But uh, this is a really easy tool uh, if you want to kind of keep some distance and you can um, check them quick, pretty quickly. Hope you enjoyed today's video learning how we can check on our bison with the drone and how do I get some of that really good footage uh, with that drone. So um, stay tuned with us as we keep watching and checking on our newborn and looking out for our second mama that we're waiting on to have a new baby. So stay tuned. Thank you guys for following. Go subscribe to our channel at Cross Timbers Bison. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. We'd love for you to follow us. Thank you guys. Clean it. We'll clean it later. Hey guys, Dusty Baker here with Cross Timbers Bison. Look what we have. We've got two baby bison now. We got a fresh newborn back there laying down next to Dakota, which is his mama, her mama. We don't know what the gender is yet, but you know, I was waiting and waiting and she was getting really close and nothing happened. And finally, you know, you just wake up one morning and here she is. So. Um, it was a full moon last night and you know people have their tales farmers have their wise tales of you know full moon crazy things happen and so here we go we have our finally we finally have our second baby and uh, it's really exciting it's a uh, some weight lifted off of her shoulders now that we don't have to really worry or stress about um, our second mama which is Dakota and the newborn calf um, here's a uh, our other little calf right here little bull who was born in late June and he's doing great he's getting used to us he's getting a little closer to us and um, but we're super excited we have number two finally and uh, the, I know other than the bull he's the big dog on campus Bell Star. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Looky there, two babies. There we go, we've got two um, baby, I'm pretty sure I think they're bulls. And um, I'm out here with a, uh, somebody who you never get to see is number one, my wife. That's Marissa, say hi to Marissa. She's the one usually behind the camera and doing all the filming, so you don't get to see her very much, but she's a really pretty one. And then we have a special guest, my buddy Cole. My, Cole is my buddy I used to live with when I taught in Plano. He's the guy who really kind of got me into technology. Um, he you know, taught me how to use a GoPro and talked me into uh, really kind of getting a drone. He was the first guy I hung out with that, that had a drone and things uh, that, you know, all kinds of sorts of stuff that he did with it. So um, anyways, here we are, we're out here with the bison. Cole's never been out here before and we're showing him around a little bit and uh, we come to check out the, the new babies. 
and um, they're doing really, really good. Can't see them right now. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're milking with mama. Look who we have here, sneaking up behind me. We got the favorite. Eleanor. Hey girl. You want some, she wants some cattle cubes. That's what she wants. Okay, so we're hanging out with our new baby bulls. This is about the closest we've been to them. This is, this is pretty good right here. Um, so anyways, uh, what we're gonna do with them. I've, I've been asked that several times. Um, well, because they're bulls, um, we'll keep them for at least probably about two years and we'll see how they grow and we'll see how they develop and then we'll make a decision from there. But, um, so we kind of have some choices at this point. We'll see and make sure John Dunbar is doing his job and hopefully he's getting some of these heifers bred, hopefully all of them bred. And uh, so that comes into consideration, is our main bull, is John gonna do the job? Um, second of all, um, how do these turn out? How do they look or do they have, you know, um, good, good genes, do they, do they look good? And do they have a good confirmation about them? Is it what we want? And then, you know, we'll see how they look. And uh, the, the range for marketing, which, you know, if you want to sell them for market and take them for, for meat processing, um, it, the range is 18 to 24 months. And so that's, you know, almost two years. And then at two years. So um, we've got some choices to make. We're not in a hurry, but we've got them here. And um, we're going to take care of them as best as we can. And we'll see what we want to do. We don't have to make the choice right now, but um, so... I hope that answers your question. I, I can't give you an exact answer, but um, obviously if there were heifers, we're gonna keep heifers. You guys know that I wanna grow our herd and we wanna expand as much as we can with the land that we have here. And uh, we're able to expand uh, with, with the land that we have here and the grass and, and the facilities. As you know, I'm about to build uh, new facilities. So all that comes into consideration, um, but Unfortunately, there's no heifers, which is okay, but um, you know what? We've got two little good bulls, and they come from two really good mamas. Marissa did a great job of picking out some good mamas, and so um, we'll, see how they, we'll see how they do. Uh, another question I, I've been getting lately about these calves. So I bought those two heifers. They're actually Marissa's heifers. Um, she picked them out um, at a device and sale here in Sulphur, Oklahoma last November. Um, so I always say mine, they're actually her two. Um, of course she has the two best ones, but um, so these are her calves and uh, she had two baby bulls. But um, so people ask me, are, are these John Dunbar's babies? You know, we talked about names and people were talking about, you know, trying to some, come up with something related to um, Dances with Wolves and John Dunbar. Well, these are not his babies yet. Uh, remember, when we bought them in November, they were already bred. And um, so that, that's something we wanted to do is try to have babies as soon as we could because it takes bison so long to reproduce. And um, so uh, they are bred from, I don't know what bull they're exactly bred from. I'd have to ask um, their previous uh, ranch manager up in the Quapaw, but they um, they come from another bull and these heifers came from a ranch with hundreds and hundreds of acres and um, So I have no idea exactly what bull they came from, but they are not John Dunbar's um, So hopefully by this time next year We'll have some John Dunbar babies and I'll be asking you guys for some opinions on some names So uh, we still haven't come up with any names yet. I think we may have one picked out on the first one. I liked, uh, we had somebody put, uh, I think it was Chaska, which was um, part of the Sioux tribe. So the Quapaws are a descendant of the Sioux. Um, and when the Quapaws relocated here in Northeastern Oklahoma, they got a bunch of land in, in Northeastern Oklahoma. And, uh, but they're still a branch of the Sioux. And somebody posted uh, on my comments or commented on one of my videos 
and uh, said Chaska, firstborn, which is under Sue. And so I did some research, research and that's what popped up. And so uh, I love it. It's, it's a native name. They come from a, a Native American tribe. And uh, I love that first name, Chaska. So we may stick with that. I don't know. We'll, we'll, uh, we should kind of ask Marissa if she approves of that. But um, for the second bull, we don't know yet. We don't, we don't have a name for it. So um, we'll, we've got to think about it. We've got some time to think about it. So we have some good stuff happening here. Got the babies. They're doing really well. They're so red. I'm, this video is not gonna then show up that well, but when these babies are born red, you can kind of see the color now in the sun, but it's funny how they come out that red color. Um, it kind of reminds me of a white-tailed deer in the summertime. They have that same red color, cinnamon. Uh, color that I usually refer to a lot of producers refer to as that cinnamon color and um, It's just pretty neat that they're that color and you know these guys are brown as can be so just nature's way of uh, Maybe that camouflage summertime camouflage uh, That they have and then they'll you know over time turn into that dark brown color that we all love Looky here. We got lots of guests today. We've got Cole, we've got DJ, sister DJ, yeah. and we've got my wife Marissa, and don't forget my favorite niece, <laughs> Emma Lou. Everybody's come out to see the boss, and this is DJ and uh, Emma's first time to see the baby. Babies. Has Daniel seen the babies yet? Not both of them. Not both One. of them? Um, yeah, so this is the first time uh, some of the family has got to see the babies since we have two now which is really fun. So here they are. They uh, come up to the corral. Mm -hmm. yeah, when they come up to the corral, it's two things. It's one, I wanna be fed, or two, it's watering time. And they come up here uh, quite a bit to get water, so. But this is the fun part. We've get, you know, take the ATV out, which uh, a couple of videos back, I showed you um, how we take the ATV out and kind of a safer way for people to see the bison and get up close to them because they come up to us and they want some cattle cubes. But um, this is this is a fun part. Uh, we get to have people come out here, and most importantly, we have family that gets to come out here and see the see the babies, which is um, really exciting and a fun time. And it's a good excuse to come out and you get to see new babies. It's not every day you get to see baby bison calves, so that's the fun part of this. 
is is to have the family and, and, and friends and doesn't matter i love showing these animals off because they're just the coolest animals so um it's really fun whenever you got babies so um i better feed them um thank you guys i hope you enjoyed the video um thank you for all the support um videos have been doing well channel's doing great and uh you know what this is our national mammal um this is so fun to talk about and so fun to to do these videos and it's it's gone a whole direction i never thought it would and that's really all because of uh the viewers and the followers on this channel and uh you know it's it's the bison it's it's i'm kind of biased i think it's the coolest animal in north america and uh if you haven't joined us follow us along on cross timbers bison.com or sorry cross timbers bison on youtube and uh facebook or instagram and we'll keep posting some videos of the babies and the herd and um just join us along and uh it's fun hanging out with these animals and i hope that you enjoy following us along as uh we get to raise some babies now which is really really fun so stay tuned guys thank you for everything Hey guys, Dusty Baker here with Cross Timbers Bison. Um, this isn't sulfur. We're not out in the pasture with the bison. Um, yeah, we're in a little different place today. Um, we're up in northeastern Oklahoma, far northeastern Oklahoma. We're at uh, the three corners, which is the corner of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Missouri. And today, um, my wife and I, um, Marissa, are up doing a um, kind of a bison social, a um, part of the Oklahoma Bison Association. Um, we're doing a tour of the Quapaw facilities and, and and their handling systems and and their whole structure that they do uh, up here um, you've heard me talk about quapaw a lot um, my two bred heifers that just had two calves are both quapaw heifers they came off of a ranch here not too far from us but this is the casino um, hotel it's called the downstream casino and hotel we just had breakfast here and we met as a uh, an association and um it's a beautiful place it's an absolute beautiful um resort hotel casino and it's part of the quapaw nation um in oklahoma so today is going to be a little bit different we're not going to be hanging out with my bison um, we're going to be hanging out and with the quapaw nation bison they also raise cattle too so we're going to be able to see kind of how they do things and um and all their facilities we're gonna go to the feedlot. Um, we're gonna go to their um, their um, butcher place, uh, where they you know where they process the meat, and uh, they do everything within the nation here. They have several restaurants and hotels, and basically everything that they produce um, is served right here in their restaurant and hotel. So yeah, it's a little gonna be a little bit different today, but um, I hope that you enjoy it. We have a lot of things in store. We're going to be driving around in one of the tour buses. And Sean Henderson, um, he's the ranch manager up here. And he is going to be giving us a big tour of everything. So um, we're going to take you along with us um, and do something a little different today. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, guys.
All right, guys, so what we're doing is we're touring one of the bison handling facilities, and um, you can tell that, man, this is, this is a working facility. This is, this is on a big operation. Now, you see how many I have, my little small herd of eight, but this is a true handling facility, and this is just the outside working portion of it. So you have your big alleys and, um, you know, kind of holding staging areas. They'll bring these um, bison in here, and it, they could be calves for weaning. Um, it could be yearlings. It could be cows. I mean, it, you got all different ages, but they'll bring them in here, and they'll get them in here kind of used to, used to these facilities, and um, they start feeding them hay and some feed and kind of calm them down once they're in here, and then get them ready, and then they'll process them through um, you know, the actual handling facility and run them through the chute where they can get their vaccinations and on all that good stuff. Um, but this is a serious setup here that the Quapaw Nation has. Sean Henderson, uh, a good friend of mine and um, the ranch manager here, the, one, the guy who I got my two Quapaw heifers from, um, has done, done a great job here. And, and he knows what he's doing. And, and I take a lot of notes from him and I pay attention to what they do here. But you can see the herd way over there. There's some yearlings and there's some calves in there. And um, so this is just one part um, of the whole um, system that they have. Okay, so right here, this is a hydraulic squeeze chute and this is a serious squeeze chute. Um, I'm not gonna get a hydraulic one. I just don't need it really right now, and plus they're really expensive. Um, but um, I'm gonna get a manual squeeze chute. This one's pretty fancy. You can see all the hydraulics to it. And you can see the whole system set up. I mean, this is serious stuff. But this is when those bison run through here. They kind of have a tendency, they want to just keep running, so this will stop them. But this is a serious facility thick hard metal that you've got to have for these bison this is hard steel pipe thick and it's sheeted to keep them um, a lot of facilities are sheeted so it keep them their vision from left and right keeps them trying to go straight so this is a really nice setup I mean it is solid all the way around and uh, this is they've got this down to a science of how they get these bison um, Safe to, safely and you know um, with as less stress amount of stress as possible to get these bison to come through here they don't want a lot of stress and they do go under some stress but they want to try to reduce that much as possible and so you got to have good facilities and this is some really good facilities Hey guys, um, so now we're at the processing plant. Uh, this is in the town of Quapaw. Uh, earlier we were at the downstream casino, now we're touring the processing facility. Um, not only do they raise bison, um, they got around 200 bison, um, can have up to 300 uh, depending on the time of the year, but uh, they raise a lot of cattle. So um, they were in the cattle industry first, um, raising lots of cattle, uh, beef cattle, and then um, have slowly got into the bison. And um, they do a great job um, with the bison, uh, but their number one thing has been cattle and they're slowly getting into the bison. But we're at the, the processing facility here. Um, it's only two years old, but man, it, it's such a nice facility. 
Um, we can't film or take pictures inside the facilities, but um, man, it is top notch. This is a USDA certified facility. And if you uh, process your meat, it can be goats, sheep, uh, bison, cattle, or pigs, and you want to be able to sell it, you have to go through the USDA, USDA um, process. And it has to be processed through a USDA inspected facility. And this is a USDA inspected facility. And uh, it is top notch. I mean, they are, I mean, I think they spent $6 million on this entire facility, which is a lot of money. But um, when it comes down to it, um, you've got to have really good facilities. You've got to have, um, they've got to pass inspection and you just have to do things right if you want to create a quality product and that's what they do and a lot of their um, animals that they produce here goes straight into uh, the casino restaurants and and some of the local um, restaurants and, and places like that um, even up here in, in this part uh, of the country um, as a school teacher I thought this was pretty cool that um, they're also uh, incorporating bison meat into the school system, which is really awesome. I love that. Um, it's not something you get to eat when you're in school is is the bison, but that is a healthy, um, you know, meat that the kids can have while they're in school, which I think is tremendous. And I think that's awesome to incorporate that. And the natives, um, the Native American tribes up in northeastern Oklahoma, um, are able to do that. But what a great facility here that. Um, that the Quapaw has and um, being able to walk through the whole process of when an animal gets here and gets off the trailer and the process of it um, being packaged and sealed and, and shipped to wherever in a restaurant or a grocery store um, or to your home. So um, pretty neat. It's a little different aspect to what we're used to. Um, you know, this is some people may not like this part of it, uh, the processing part, but um, you know, it's, it's part of it if that's what you want to do if you want to raise a, uh, a meat source and we all know that the bison is a great source for a high quality protein a healthy meat um, you know this is the, what they have to go through and um, we hadn't quite got there yet back in uh, with my little small herd and we won't probably for a long time uh, just because we're small and it takes so long to start but um, this is where it all kind of leads to if you want to go that direction All right, so we're here at the feed yard. This is where they'll feed out a lot of their steers. Um, not, this is not used for the bison facility, but um, it's pretty impressive. All these handling working facilities that they have. I mean, this is hard, hard steel pipe um, beefed up right here. This is the way you do it. Um, but there's a huge feed lot. You can kind of see, sorry, the sun's bad. But um, anyways. What a great facility that uh, the Quapaw Nation has, and um, Sean Henderson uh, runs out here. Uh, they do a great job, and they have uh, took the time to give us a tour. Um, we had, uh, I don't know, about 16 uh, Oklahoma Bison Association members today, which was fun. And also, it was uh, my wife's birthday, and uh, probably not what she expected to do on her, uh, you know, birthday, but... Uh, is come out and see some see some uh, bison facilities up in Miami, Oklahoma, in the Quapaw Nation. But um, we had fun. It was a good day, and uh, I know it was a little something different than my bison uh, farm. You know, um, it'd be really fun to go out and um, look at other bison farms and and see how they operate. And on a large scale like this one, um, where you've got 200 head of bison. And uh, even on a small scale, I think it'd be really fun to be able to do that. And so um, 
Sean was nice enough to um, allow the Oklahoma Bison Association members, some of the members to come up and um, show us around the facilities. He spent most of the day out here um, showing us all their working facilities, the processing plant, their feed lot. And so really pre uh, appreciate Sean and the Quapaw Nation um, for allowing us to do this. They have some really great facilities. And the reason is um, because of good people um, like Sean and, and the guys that he works with that do a really great job um, of trying to perfect the handling system so that they can um, handle cattle and bison safely and um, just do everything the right way and try to be um, you know, smart about it and just and you know when you have all these great facilities and you do a good job you create um, you know good product and I think that's what they want to do and the Quapaw Nation is doing things to help enable that so hope you guys enjoyed it today I know it's a little bit different but um, you know it, it's good to branch out and see what everybody else is doing uh, thank you guys for watching um, Follow us along on Cross Timbers Bison on Facebook or Instagram. And, uh, you know, subscribe to us if you want. Uh, we appreciate the followers that we have and just love that there's a lot of uh, people out there that love to see our bison in our small farm in Sulphur, Oklahoma. Thank you, guys. Hey guys, Dusty Baker from Cross Timbers Bison. Uh, we're just hanging out in the pasture. I guess I'm hanging out in the pasture. I don't have all my friends and, and family and my wife with me, but um, we do have the Cross Timbers herd. Uh, bull, he's resting up for breeding season. He needs all the rest he can get. He's got some heifers to breed. So Dunbar, get some rest, buddy. You're gonna need it. So, but anyways, you know, this is a different hat than I normally wear. Um, I usually wear my Columbia sports hat, um, but this is my, uh, the school I teach at. And, uh, uh, and most of you know, I'm a, I'm a coach and a teacher in um, Oklahoma and uh, just around the corner is football season. And uh, when it becomes football season, I kind of disappear for, for four months. If uh, don't ask my wife about it, she shouldn't get too excited about football season. Um, all the time. She likes to watch football, but uh, not all the time does she uh, get excited because um, I'm gone a lot during football season, you know, from August till November um, or so. I, I'm pretty busy. Uh, we work on the weekends and uh, work on, you know, all during the week, games on Friday nights, and it's just a busy time of the year. We love our football here, and, um, you know, I love I love being able to uh, mentor kids and, and, and I love being around kids. It, it's fun. I enjoy it. And, um, you know, it's the relationships that you build out there with those, those players and, and even the students in your classroom that can last forever. And uh, that's really what's kept me going um, in teaching is, is the bonds you make with the students and, and the teachers that you've you know, taught with and even the coaches along the way. I'm going into my 10th year of teaching. I did five in Oklahoma. I'm about to get my, well, I did five in Texas, sorry, and I'm about to get my fifth year in Oklahoma. And I've coached every year. I've coached football. I've coached basketball. I've even did baseball. And, uh, and now I do tennis um, as well as football. 
So I love being in the classroom. I love being able to talk about my bison. Um, one of my students the other day made a comment, or one of my football players made a comment the other day and said, uh, if you're in Coach Baker's class, you're going to know everything about sulfur, Oklahoma, and you're going to know everything about bison. So <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny, um, and he was right. <laughs> so if you come to my classroom, you're going to hear about my hometown, and you're going to hear about my bison. So I love being able to bring that into the classroom. It, it's fun. I, you know, I get to tell my story and, and my experiences uh, to my kids. And so that's pretty fun, you know, to, to be able to do that in the classroom. But you know, we talk about relationships, um, you know, on, on the football field or in the classroom, but, you know, also out here, it, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, we're talking about a, a bison here, but, you know, you see how close these animals get to me. Um, they weren't always like that, uh, especially those two mamas, um, the quapaw mamas. And when they first got here, they wouldn't come close to us. I mean, 100 yards, they'd see us and they'd uh, you know, scatter away, but um, you see how close we are now, and these babies are even starting to come closer after, you know, two or three weeks of, of being born, but it takes time to build that bond and that trust with, that trust with these bison, um, and these mamas are, are got to where they will come within 15, 20 feet of us, um, you know, so it takes time of you being out here uh, being with them, letting them see you and get used to you. They'll smell you. They get used to your smells. They, I mean, the, these animals can smell really well. Uh, they have a really good uh, nearsighted vision. And, uh, but they just get used to you. They get used to you being out here and they know your body movements and, you know, they just, they adapt to you and you adapt to them as well. And uh, that's what's been fun this, you know, and interesting this whole first year. Um, but we've definitely created some trust between each other. They know that I'm going to take care of them. And they know I want them to kind of live and grow in, in peace and uh, do their thing out here, you know, in the pasture. And um, so that's just kind of a, a unique thing is to kind of get this relationship with those animals. I don't have, you know, a ton of bison, but, uh, and I'm sure it's a lot harder on the big ranches. I don't, I don't have, you know, one of those big ranches, you know, I talk about ours is small. And so I'm able to, to do that. I'm able to get out here and, you know, get around these bison, you know, on a daily basis. But so that's the fun part about having a small herd. Someday I would like to have a big herd and um, you know, you may not be able to as bond to them as, as well as you'd like, but we'll see. We, we don't know. I haven't been there yet. I don't have a large herd, but you know, maybe that'll happen someday. But I love being able to have these eight now. <laughs> I've always said six. Now I can say eight because of those two little knuckleheads there. But, um, you know, that's the fun part about this. And uh, as we grow and as we get new ones, these guys will get used to us. They'll get used to us being in the pasture with them. They'll get used to us feeding them. And um, that makes it a whole lot easier whenever you want to work them. And I've talked about working the bison, but it makes it so much easier when you get around them, um, when they will chase that feed bucket around. Um, like this morning, I, when I came out here, they were up at the corral and I wanted to get them out in the pasture and, and get some good photos of them. And so I just brought a, buck, a five gallon bucket of feed out and uh, they're just those cattle cubes you see me feed them and, and they love it. And uh, you know, when they will follow me around, when you get that bucket, it grabs their attention and we're able to control them a little better. Um, you don't have full control obviously with these animals, but it makes life a lot easier, uh, especially when you're maybe moving them from pasture to pasture for pasture rotation or you're about to work them and you're gonna put them in the pens. Um, whenever the fall comes around, you know, October, November, hopefully we have our uh, bison shoot system set up and, and our alley system and everything ready. We'll be able to, oh, we'll be able to um, show you how we work them and you'll see their different body language. That body language will change real quick when you corner them 
and you get to working them. They know what's going on when you get them in those pins, but that makes us the process is so much better. Somebody's making some noises. And uh, so being out here, being with them, creating that bond and that trust with them um, makes life a lot easier when we go to work them. They won't be near as wild and crazy as sometimes you see on, on television um, uh, because they can be and, and they do act different when you get around them in a pen and you corner them. Uh, but this being out here and being around them makes it so much easier. You'll understand that whenever uh, we show you some, uh, when we get working them, um, you know, film. So but that'll be a while to go. That, we've got several months before we get there. Uh, you know, as a coach and a teacher um, and, and football season quickly approaching, um, I'm going to have less time with the bicep, which is super sad. Uh, but, you know, that's part of my life. It's, it's my career is to go out there and be be out there coaching and mentoring uh, those young men. Um, so I may not get to be out here as much, but you know, that's that's part of it. That's okay. I'd like to spend some more time with them, but uh, you know, we gotta go back to school and uh, that's just part of it. You know, that's the, that's the life that I chose, but um, that's okay. But um, the cool thing is, is I get to still talk about the bison. I get to bring them in the classroom and share my experiences with them. Uh, kids will always want to see videos of them and stuff. So, um, anyways, I teach, uh, I probably told you this a long time ago, but um, I teach freshmen. I teach Oklahoma history. So, that is a cool part about my job is, you know, Oklahoma history has so much Native American history, which I love Native American history. I'm so interested and fascinated by it. But one of the cool connections to the Native Americans is the bison. Um, the bison was so essential to so many plains tribes uh, and they they relied on the bison for everything you know for for tools for food and shelter clothing several things and that's what's so cool about bringing them into the classroom because I do talk about them um, because they are in our history book and we get to talk about um, just how important they were and then uh, you know the devastation of the bison and what uh, what it led to uh, affecting how it affected the Native Americans and their survival and so um, that's fun I, I, good, I do get to talk about that in class and re have that um, connection between the Native Americans and the bison um, which uh, there's some it's it's sad there's a sad history there and uh, but you know We've got them right here in our pasture and we're doing our best to bring the bison back as well as all the other bison producers in North America. And um, it's just really exciting. I never thought that I'd have my own bison herd and be able to talk about them in my classroom to my Oklahoma history students. to have a, a wonderful wonderful wife that has been very supportive and um, you know when we came up when we come up with this idea to do this she was on board and she was super excited so 
Um, not only am I lucky in my job uh, to be able to teach kids, but man, my wife has been so supportive and um, she didn't grow up on a farm. Uh, she grew up in Nebraska. You're like, how did she not grow up on a farm? I don't know. It's okay. We, we forgive her. But, uh, you know, she jumped into this thing and uh, she wanted to get into it and she loves it. She loves being out here with them. She's fascinated by them just as much as I am every time you come out here. So I'm really lucky to be able to do this. So really cheers to her and and because you know when I go to football I don't get to see my wife as much and and that's tough uh, you know but um, that's she understands she's used to it by now ready to get back in the classroom ready to you know get on that football field and those Friday nights with those boys and those coaches it's just something else it's just uh, it's just a different feeling out there when when you've worked so hard over the summer and the off season and and then it all comes together on Friday nights you know you put all that time and preparation during the week and on the weekends and then you do it on one Friday night you know you put it all together and get after it so if you don't see me as much I'm sorry I'm really sorry but just know that um, um, that I'm out there uh, coaching the boys and, and, and teaching the kids about Vison as much as I can and uh, they probably get really annoyed by me anyways because I talk about sulfur and the bison so much but oh well they can suck it up but <laughs> um, just know that um, we're working and, and you know my family's here um, we're on we're on my family's farm so um, they're able to help me take care of them and uh, when I'm not around as much um, my you know stepdad Kevin uh, will, will help me take care of them and we'll be down here some hanging out with them whenever we can and, and also at the same time I got a whole nother project we've got cabins uh, over in sulfur down by the lake in the National Park and so we're gonna be pretty busy for a while but you know what these animals take care of themselves they do a really good job um, you know we, we keep them fed we keep we try to keep them healthy and make sure that they have plenty of grass and, and water so um, these these animals they run their own system really they do and we just got to keep an eye on them and make sure those two little calves are healthy and make sure everything's going okay guys thank you for the support thank you for following um, this has gone somewhere where I never expected it to go and I'm just very appreciative and super blessed and lucky to have people that actually uh, want to know more about bison that people that uh, follow us that uh, you know just love seeing the bison love seeing the footage of the bison and I love it that you love it and um, so I'm gonna keep doing this I'm gonna uh, I, I love being out here with them and um, I love sharing my story and my experience with you guys uh, if you haven't followed us along come follow us and uh, you know I always try to post pictures uh, of them and um, you know Facebook or Instagram so stay in touch with us we'll be keeping an eye on these uh little baby bulls we still don't have their their names yet um, but we'll get there try to figure it out we take a little time we're not in a hurry to, to get their names but um stay with us guys and uh thank you for following us along um subscribe to us if you want and just follow this cross timbers bison herd and watch as these calves grow and and uh you know, they keep living the dream out here in the, the grassland. Thank you, guys. Hey, Eleanor.
guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. We're out here on a hot summer morning. It's hot in Oklahoma. We've had 100 degree weather and um, I know these bison are super hot and they're trying to find all the shade that they can get. So we're out here and we've got a guest that's with us that has not yet seen the calves yet. And you probably know him. But I brought some guests with me out here besides my really dirty dog who loves the water. But I've got my wife. Where are you? There she hey. is. There. And then I have a somebody who you guys know, but hasn't seen the baby bison yet. Look at that little nephew of mine. Can you see him? There he is. But look, they're already coming up to him and loving on him and smelling on him and checking him out because he's new and so they want to know who the heck's out here in their pasture and so the first thing they do is they want to sniff you and uh, get your scents and all that good stuff. living the dream out here hanging out with the bison. I mean, what else would you want to do? I mean, that, it's not to be hot. It's hot, isn't it? Yeah. It's really hot. I would love to get away. I bet you would. You love the water. This is Houston's first time to see the calves. And, um, you know, it's pretty cool, isn't it? You get to see the baby calves. So, um, as soon as we got out here, um, the bison always want to know, who the heck are you, you know, wh who is this out here? So the first thing they do is, uh, they come up to me, they, they smell you, and then, you know, they want to know who's out here. And so the first thing they did is, to Houston, is they came up to Houston and, uh, you know, took a smell of him and accepted him, he's good to go. One thing uh, we, we didn't do is we didn't bring our cattle cubes. So, um, that's one thing that they always will come and check is to see if you got any cattle cubes. But uh, the cool part, this is the fun part about um, having these animals um, and, and doing this and bringing people out here is family. We get to bring family out here. Uh, my sister and Emma have been on one of my videos before of the first time they're of seeing the calves. And so now we've got Houston. Um, he's getting worn out. It's hot out here. Very much. But Houston, you're a lucky guy. You get to come out here and hang out with bison firsthand. When you first came out here, they came right up to you. And you know what? There's a lot of kids your age that don't have that opportunity. Um, so um, it's pretty neat, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. But, um, you know, it's it's not always safe. That's why we kept you in the ATV. Because if you watch uh, some of the latest videos on YouTube, um, you see people out in the middle of the national park. Uh, that is dealing with a whole different um, wild bison. Um, they are used to people, but that is their world. And when you step in their world um, and you get a little bit too close, um, you know, things can go wrong. And that's what happened <laughs> if you saw that video of that girl. Um, I'm glad she's okay, but man, that is very dangerous for for people to be out there in, in Yellowstone and those big national parks like that. It is not the same as being out here around bison who are used to hands-on 
you know, and people being around them all the time, and we get up close to them and feed them. Those bison out there aren't used to that, and they are, they're a little bit different breed. Um, they're the same type of bison, they're plains bison, um, known as the genus species is bison bison, which is the same as mine. So. There you go. Atta boy. You ready? And keep your hand flat. Is that for us? Look at that big old tongue. Oh, that feels so weird. <laughs> it's rough, isn't it? Yeah. It's like hard. It's like a, like, it's like semen. It's like <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that feels so weird. Why do you think this? All right, excuse, so Houston's with us. He helped feed uh, the bison, but one thing that is, is fun about having the youth out here is um, they don't know the history of the bison, and of course, being a history teacher, um, I like to talk about their history. So Houston, these animals, a long time ago, were flourishing. They were all over the place, like there was no fences or anything, and so uh, they just roamed free. You know, like all those deer and just did you see them in random places well how would you like to be driving down the road and the bison be running across the road or out in your pasture with the with uh, your goats and the and the deer and whatnot It'd be pretty cool right well it used to be like that a long time ago um there was millions of them but so then they started to die they started to die a Why? lot of bad things happened to them what well a lot of people got money hungry and wanted to kill them, just shoot them for that hide. You see how thick and pretty that hide is? Yeah. Right? Just like a deer skin. Same thing. That hide became really expensive. And so what people started doing is they started hunting them. And they kept shooting them. But all that meat was wasted. All they wanted was to make money on that hide. And so what happened to millions of the bison is they disappeared. They almost came to extinction. You know what that means? What? Extinction means completely gone. Like gone, like where we would never see. Can you imagine like if there was not a goat left in the whole world? Right? It'd be crazy. Well, these animals almost completely disappeared. And so... Were you alive when that happened? I was not alive. None of us were here. This is like late 1800s. So this is... This is like over a hundred years ago, way before you and I, your dad, mom was all here, but they almost disappeared. But people started to raise them and, and try to save the bison and look where they are now. We get to own some. How cool is that? Yeah. Do you think you could talk your dad into... You can one of these babies? Yeah. Because what I was talking about earlier is what you don't know is your dad and I when we worked together at the park, so what your dad and I used to do is we used to go out in the bison pasture at the National Park Service when we worked together in the summertime and we would feed them. That was the first time we got to hand feed them. And we, that was our first time to be up close to them. And we took care of them. Did he ever tell you those stories? Mm -hmm. Well, we need to get on to dad and tell him to talk to you about that. So when we start to, started to hang out with them, you know those bison when you drive through the park and you see them in the pasture sometimes? It's them. We used to take care of them. And so that's what kind of got me started into doing this. So, and now we get to have them right here in our pasture. That's pretty cool. So we need, I think we need to talk your dad into... Keeping these for you. Well, he can, yeah. Because... Well, uh, you know what? We can it. always have more, can't we? Yeah. We can make it bigger. But your pasture isn't that big as ours. Yeah. You've got, you got some more acres. more room. <laughs> yep. But you know what? I've only got eight, so we don't need a whole lot. But what if someday we had like 
hundred. Okay, that would be that would be way awesome. Overdue. That would be way over too. <laughs> but how cool would that be? You'd look out in the pasture and they'd just be everywhere. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. So I've been giving Houston a hard time for a long time about that long blonde hair. And I said, man, you need to cut your hair. Cut your hair, dude. Um, and that's just being the coach and, and me. And that's what I did. And he cut his hair. And now, what do you say to me? I say you need to start shaving your beard. <laughs> he wants me to shave my beard all the time. So. Because I hate um, it. So now, now he's throwing it back at me after uh, I gave him a hard time for having long hair for a forever so no you got shaved uh no but isn't it cool isn't it kind of nice i'm getting ready for winter time <laughs> okay guys so i've had a lot of good compliments on our new shirts as you can see that we're rocking out um you saw daniel from arms family homestead uh you know put our wear our shirt for us and rep it um so we uh I just basically took my logo and put it on here and so um, the good news is and I've had a lot of requests um, for some shirts so what we're gonna start doing I'm um, here pretty soon is we are getting some shirts made and we're gonna start selling some shirts if you'd like to have one um, maybe in one of my uh, upcoming videos I'll um, let you know the process and how to get you a shirt um, cross timbers bison shirt uh, if you'd like to have one so we'll keep you updated on that Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. And you know, it's nice to have family always come out and, and be a part of, you know, getting able to uh, be around the bison, especially calves. Everybody loves baby calves. Who doesn't love baby bison calves? And uh, so it was good for Houston to get out here and get to see the bison. Learn a little bit about the history of the bison and uh, super unique story. And I hope that as he grows up, as well as others can understand um, more about the history of bison and um, you know and like I just told him we have them out here in our pasture which is so cool um, and we love being able to say that and that we can contribute to the uh, to the bison world and we get to do that right here in our own pastures so it's nice to have uh, Houston from arms family homestead out here with us today and my wife she loves it um, just as much as I do and, and she does a lot of the recording for me so she's not able to be out here with me all the time uh, and on the videos too as well so but I hope you guys enjoyed the video um, if you already haven't subscribe to us follow us along if you'd like uh, these animals are fun to be around they're fun to watch and uh, I love filming them and I love getting up close and personal to them as you guys know that so um, just follow us along if you'd like, uh, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you got any questions or anything or thoughts, um, you know, give us a holler sometime and you can feel free to email me or, or comment on some of my latest videos. Thank you guys. Over. <laughs> She's a knucklehead. She's goofy sometimes. He's nice. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, you lunch. You want to fix your hair? Is it okay? Monday or Tuesday earlier this week we um, had some guys come and cut this hay and it was the first time that this uh, patch had been cut um, which I'm going to show you just in a little bit get some good footage of it um, is the first time that they cut it uh, you know we really need hay for the bison and uh, so we can feed them out when all this 
uh, green grass is uh, dead and gone. And um, so what we did was, is we contacted some guys who've been cutting hay around here. Um, as they make their rounds, you wanna try to catch them um, as they're moving all their equipment from place to place. You wanna try to catch them on their way from, from one spot to another. Ours is, is not much. I mean, we probably cut maybe 10 to 15 acres. Um, but they came, they showed up, uh, they had three tractors and they buzzed it out in like an hour and a half. Then the next day, the next day they came and they um, raked it and built it. And I mean, it was done in like two or three days total. And then uh, my stepdad, Kevin, um, as you'll see, uh, used the tractor and, and I drove the truck with, with my nephew Houston around in the trailer. And we, we got the hay hauled back up here and we got it stacked up. It up. And we ended up getting 33 bales of hay, which is a lot of hay for us. That's good. And a lot of the hay turned out um, really good. Um, the type of hay it was, it's just natural uh, grass, a lot of prairie grass. There's some weeds in there because it's so late in the year, but that's okay. Um, you know, the bison, uh, they're not too particular on hay and you can feed them just about any range of hay. They, they like some others than, you know, uh, than they can pick from, but they'll love this hay. It's natural grass prairie hay. From
so we got all the hay hauled in. Um, we've got 33 bales of hay. It's the first time that we've bailed that side of the pasture before. But um, this hay will get us through a long time. They get us through all the cold months. Um, you know, when this grass, it's already starting to die. We haven't had really good rain in about a month. And it's oh. super hot here. Oh, you had, there was some rain the other day. And, um, but, yeah. but the rain that we had in, in the spring and in May was really good. But it's died off a lot and it's super hot and dry here. Well, those grasses die off that we had. Um, all the good grass we had in the spring and got into early summer is all gone now. And the bison have grazed a bunch of it down. Um, so we've got lots of hay. Um, and this hay, we'll really start putting it out, you know, um, October, November, we'll be putting out a lot of hay and go all the way through um, the winter, you know, into the spring until we get that spring, those spring grasses coming back. Um, and they love, they love this hay. Um, they love the roughage and it's good for them. And it's nice because it's it, a lot of it's native grass that we have here from our own pasture. Um, but so this stuff will come in handy. It's so nice that you have it right here and you saw how we hauled it all in here. Um, we don't have to take it very far, but we have it. And, um, anytime that we need to, we can just get it right here from our own stack. So thank you guys for following. I appreciate everything. Uh, the comments that you guys have been giving very positive and, and I love it. My wife and I go through and read them and, uh, we try to respond to you guys. So thank you for that. And, um, check us out on Facebook or Instagram. Um, uh, follow us on Cross Timbers Bison on YouTube if you'd like. Uh, thank you guys so much for following us along. What's in there? Hmm? Checking that bucket out. Well, you're mad because I don't have any cubes. Sorry. Is that how it's gonna be? You're just gonna walk away? Okay.